Hello everyone and welcome to Life Science Live. My name is Marie and today we are going to be talking all about jellyfish. So let's start with the basics. Where do jellyfish live? So jellyfish actually live in every ocean in the world. So let's write that down. Jellyfish live in every ocean. So jellyfish can be found in every ocean of the world. Um, what's, what's some other cool things about jellyfish? Jellyfish are 95% water. Let's see, 95% water. Uh, humans are about 60% water, but jellyfish are 95% water. And when they, if a jellyfish washes up onto the beach, they will actually just evaporate because they are made of so much water. Let's see, what else? Um, Jellyfish are actually not fish. Um, the word jellyfish is actually a broad term for a bunch of invertebrates. So a jellyfish is an invertebrate, which means actually, um, which means that they don't have a backbone. So jellyfish are invertebrates. They are invertebrates. And since they're invertebrates, they don't have any bones. Jellyfish also don't have uh, a brain or a heart. Jellyfish also don't have eyes, and they don't have any blood either. So jellyfish are very interesting animals. Let's see. No bones. No brain. No heart. No blood. Okay, so now we know a little bit about jellyfish. Um, so now let's move on to their life cycle. So how, where do jellyfish come from? How are they born? Um, I'm about to tell you. So the jellyfish life cycle is kind of strange. It's a little bit different. So let's talk about it. So here we have um, an adult So this is an adult jellyfish, and an adult jellyfish will release um, germ cells, uh, I guess they're also called reproductive cells, into the water. So they'll, they will release their germ cells into the water, male and females will, and then the germ cells will come together to create a, an egg. So the, well, So the germ cells will become a fertilized egg, and then the the egg will turn into a um, let's see, planu. I'm I'm gonna say this wrong. It's called a planula larva. So the egg will become this. Um, let's see. I'm gonna use my cheat sheet to help me figure out how to spell it. Okay, P-L-A-N-U-A-L-A, larva. Okay, yeah, so that, the egg becomes this, um, and it ends up growing little uh, hair-like structures on the outside, those are called cilia, uh, and it just helps it move around and catch things. So this larva will then uh, settle on the sea floor, so this thing will go to the seafloor and then something called a polyp will grow from the ocean floor. And it kind of looks like this. Um, okay, that is a very bad drawing of a polyp, but that's kind of what it looks like. They uh, grow from the ocean floor. So this is how, we're talking about how jellyfish, the life cycle of a jellyfish. And from this polyp, they will go into um, a budding polyp. So it kind of looks like this. Just a bunch of these stacked on top of each other, like this. So that's kind of what a budding polyp looks like. Um, let's put budding. 
to do the polyp. Okay, so, so far we have the adult jellyfish releases germ cells into the water, male and females do, and then they come together and fertilize and become an egg, and then the egg will become the, um, gonna say it wrong, planula larva, and then this will go settle on the floor, become a polyp, the, pot the polyp will begin to bud, and then this ends up becoming a, um, Ephyra larva, I'm saying it wrong again, and it looks like this. Kind of like that. Another bad drawing, but that's what it becomes. And this is how you spell it. We are running out of room. Okay. Okay. So you spell it like this. E P H Y R A larva larva okay and then this young jellyfish will end up becoming an adult jellyfish so it goes like this and the adult jellyfish is called a medusa okay so that's kind of a rough drawing of the life cycle of a jellyfish i'll go through it one more time so the adult jellyfish or the medusa will release gam uh, gametes or germ cells into the water, that becomes a fertilized egg, that becomes this little larva right here, and it those little things are cilia to help it move around. This will become a polyp. It kind of looks like, it does look like a plant in the ocean, which is very strange to think that jellyfish come from this. So it becomes a polyp, then the polyp begins to bud, and I believe these are just clones. So the, the jellyfish is actually cloning itself, and it will become this larva right here, some people say it looks like a flower, kind of, um, but it's called the uh, Ephyra larva. And then it will keep growing and maturing into an adult jellyfish called the Medusa. So it's a little bit about the jellyfish life cycle. Uh, now let's talk about some different types of jellyfish. We're going to talk about three different types. Uh, let's first talk about the most dangerous jellyfish in the world. Um, does anybody know what the most dangerous jellyfish is? Go ahead and leave a little comment if you can say it before I write it up there. So, um, let me go right here. So, can anybody guess what it is? Most dangerous jellyfish in the world. So, the most dangerous jellyfish is called the box jellyfish. Box jelly. Uh, they are the most venomous animal in the entire ocean, um, and I believe their venom is strong enough to kill a human. Um, and but these don't live anywhere near us, so we don't have to worry about them. Uh, or the most venomous ones don't. The most venomous sorry, the most venomous box jellyfish live near Australia and Africa and Indonesia, so they live over there. We don't really have to worry about them. So let me show you a picture of a box jellyfish. So this is what they look like. They're called a box jellyfish because they're, um, this part of their body is kind of shaped like a cube. So that's why they're called a box jellyfish. Um, and these jellyfish, they're tentacles. They have about, I read they have about 15 tentacles that can get up to 10 feet long. So their tentacles can be very long, up to 10 feet. Um, so yeah, that's box jellyfish. Let's put them up here. Okay. Can you guys see that? Okay. The next jellyfish we're going to talk about is, let's talk about the lion's mane jellyfish. Um, I think it's the largest jellyfish in the world. Um, they are very, very big. They, let me show you. So, the lion's mane jellyfish, I think, can get up to 7 feet wide, and they can get up to 120, their tentacles can get up to 120 feet long. So here's a little picture to help you see the comparison. We have a human up here, and then a sperm whale, and then a blue whale, and then 
the lion's mane jellyfish. You can see really how long their tentacles are. They are longer than a blue whale, which is insane. That's crazy to think about. There's a human, and then there's the lion's mane jellyfish. So these really big jellyfish live, they like to live in colder waters. They will live up near um, Alaska and Canada. So yeah, they like to live in the colder waters. So yeah, let's look at that again. It's crazy to see how big they are. But here's another picture just to kind of see what they look like. Um, so that's kind of, you can kind of see how big they are next to that scuba diver. So they are huge, but their tentacles will just keep going and going and going. They're so long. You can get up to 120 feet long. Okay, so let's put that picture up here. And that jellyfish is called the lion's mane jellyfish. Lion's mane. Okay. And the last jellyfish we're going to talk about is called the immortal jellyfish. And it's called the immortal jellyfish because it can actually reverse uh, its life cycle. So a full-grown immortal jellyfish can actually go back to this larval stage and then go back to a polyp, which is insane to think about. It uh, is able to basically live forever. Um, and this jellyfish will transition back to a, uh, the larval stage when it feels stressed. So if I think uh, if there's not enough food or if maybe there's an extreme change in temperature, then the jellyfish will start to transform back into the larval stage and then into the polyp. And then once it feels like it's safe again, it will start, the polyp will start budding again and then it will transform back into a, a fully grown adult jellyfish. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let me show you a picture. Here's a picture of an immortal jellyfish. These jellyfish are really, really small. Um, they're very small. I'm, I don't know exactly how small they are, but they're pretty small. Um, so you can see they're pretty um, translucent or clear, but in the middle they have this orange, sorry, they have this orange part right here. I think that's their stomach or their gastro intest, um, intestinal tract right there, uh, but it's orange, but the rest is pretty clear or translucent. So yeah, that's an immortal jellyfish. They can reverse their life cycle, which is pretty cool. All right, let's put them up here. Immortal jellyfish. Okay, we're gonna talk about one more thing today before we end, and it is how jellyfish sting. So how do jellyfish sting? Well, I'll tell you. So inside of a jellyfish tentacle, let me draw it. Um, we'll draw it right here. How jellyfish sting. Okay. So inside of a jellyfish tentacle, we're going to um, make it a lot bigger than it actually is. So let's draw it. So here we have the tentacle. That's the tentacle right here. So inside of the tentacle, there are something called nematocysts. I'll write it down so you can see it. Uh, but um, yeah, inside of a tentacle, there's a bunch of nematocysts. Uh, so let's draw it. They look like this, kind of little things or little things like that, um, and inside of the nematocysts are little, um, I guess, harpoons or barbs uh, with a string attached to them. So a little pointy thing with a coil or a string attached to it. That's hard to see. Hold on, let me see if I can... Let's erase this. And draw it bigger. 
Okay, tentacle. Nematocyst. Let's spell it. N A. Oh, sorry. N E M. Nema A. T O C Y. Nematocyst. And inside the nematocyst is a um, a barb or a harpoon. So let's draw it right there. Little sharp thing, and then there's a little string attached to it. And there's little hairs, or hair-like, they're not hairs, but they're hair-like structures on the outside of the tentacle. And when those little hair structures get touched, or um, there's like a chemical reaction, then the hair will tell this little barb to, the, the, uh, the nematocyst will open, and then it will shoot out like this. And that's what happens when the little hair-like structures get touched. Um, these uh, barbs or harpoons will get shot out from the, from the nematocyst. And uh, this is what stings you. This is how you get stung by a jellyfish from these little tiny microscopic harpoons that, um, that releases venom into your body. So that is how you get stung by a jellyfish. Um, if you guys have any questions, please ask me. I love to answer questions. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about jellyfish and how they sting you. I'll go over it one more time. So this is the tentacle. This is the nematocyst. Inside are, uh, is a harpoon. And when these hair-like structures get touched, the harpoon will shoot out of the nematocyst. And that is what stings you. All right, everybody, that is all I have for you today. I hope you learned a little bit more about jellyfish and um, let me know if you have any questions. Just go ahead and type them in uh, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.